Let's mm, let's track. People really go nuts for Halloween stuff, and now it's even infiltrated this channel, and it's all your fault. I kept getting comments on the channel and questions on Twitter about the best Super Nintendo games to play on Halloween, but my answer was always, duh, it's always the same games I've covered several times on this channel, they're obvious. But no, that wasn't enough. I asked in a YouTube poll about doing a Halloween games video, and it came back with a whopping 8% agreeing with me. Alright, fine, I'll do a video, but first, I put it to another poll, this time on Twitter, asking if a list would be too pathetic and pandering. And it's the exact same result. Hey, you 8% out there, I feel you, but sometimes you gotta give the people what they want, and that's perfectly okay with me. So here we go, the best Super Nintendo games to play on Halloween. But before I get the list started, there's one game that deserves a mention, Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday. I bring this one up because, for those of you out there with small children, this would be a good, simple Halloween-style game to play. Yeah, it might be a little on the difficult side for them, depending on how old they are, but that cartoony Warner Brothers Halloween style is represented really well here. So if you want a good, kid-friendly Halloween game, this is a good way to go. 13. Super Mario World. Wait, what? No, not regular Super Mario World. I mean Super Mario World after you get through all 96 exits and come back and play through the game again. And, uh, what the hell is going on here? The color scheme is all warped, and the Koopas are all wearing masks of Mario's face, and everything just looks wrong. Okay, this isn't the scariest thing ever. I just thought I'd point it out as an easy way to play a familiar game with a different twist. Twelve! Nosferatu. This is one of those cinematic platformers, kind of like Blackthorn or Out of This World, where the controls are very deliberate instead of open-ended and freewheeling. Still, this is an interesting playthrough with some great visual design where you fight enemies like mummies, goblins, and Frankenstein's monsters through six long levels with no passwords, all with your own bare hands, no weapons here. This is your traditional Halloween horror stuff here, so if you've already played stuff like the Castlevanias to death, then this one is worth checking out. 11. La Place No Ma. Hey, wait, I actually haven't talked about this one before. This game was Japan only, but it very recently got an updated English patch. It's a port from the NEC PC 8801 and PC 9801. You're exploring a mansion in the town of Newcam, which is actually modeled after the city of Arkham created by HP Lovecraft. The mansion's previous owner did all sorts of crazy black magic stuff and it seeped into the house itself somehow. This game isn't spectacular, it's just a turn-based role-playing game with the typical combat you'd expect, just with a horror setting. So if that's what you're looking for, then here you go. Ten. Ghoul Patrol. This is a sequel of sorts to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. It was made by a different development team, and while it may not have the same charm of the original, it's still a solid game that fits the Halloween motif. You fight your way through five different worlds to save your town from a horror exhibit that's come to life. Jeez, who thought a horror exhibit would be a good idea after people's neighbors were eaten by zombies? Anyway, this game is perfectly okay, and it's a good choice if you're looking for a multiplayer game and you're already sick and tired of its quote-unquote prequel. Nine. Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah, that's right, we're going all the way back to the original game of the series that's still going on today. Released only in Japan, although I will say, you can't go wrong with any of the Super Famicom Shin Megami Tensei games. I still prefer the original because it really stands out in the 16-bit landscape. It's a first-person dungeon crawler where you play as a teenage boy who can communicate with demons through a computer. What makes this one really stand out though is its modern setting, which was unusual for the time and it's still pretty cool today. This one definitely has some crazy images that's still unnerving to encounter today, and it's a little grind-heavy, and some people may not like how open-ended and non-linear and how long of a game this is, but it's still worth checking out. Eight. Castlevania Dracula X Yes, yes, I know this game is much better as Rondo of Blood on TurboGrafx-16 CD, but this is still a perfectly good playthrough, especially for this time of year. This game shouldn't really be seen as a follow-up to Super Castlevania 4, it's more of a throwback to the original Castlevania series on NES since you can only whip in two directions, and the difficulty has turned up several notches. There's nine levels, and the visuals here are spectacular throughout. The soundtrack kicks ass too, so even though this might not be the best version of this game, it's still a good time on Super Nintendo. Seven. Mayuo, also known as King of Demons. If you prefer your Halloweens to have more of a Dario Argento feel to them, then look no further than this game, which has some staggering enemy design. I mean, what are these things? 
you gotta rescue your wife and child from hell, and along the way you gain forms you can change into, and there's seven levels and no passwords, and this game is tough, so this one takes some time and patience to complete. It's a good game, no other Super Nintendo or Super Famicom game looks quite like this one, so it's definitely unique in that regard. Six. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Of course this one is on this list. If you prefer your Halloweens be more campy than creepy, then like Ghoul Patrol, this one should be more up your alley. It's 55 levels of crazy top-down action straight from the vein of games like Smash TV, only with the visual aesthetic of a B-level horror movie. It's also two-player co-op, and this is a case where it really helps to have a second player because this game escalates to an absurd degree, especially with some of the bosses like that giant baby which I can never get past. Five. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Of course this game is great for Halloween, it's called Ghouls and Ghosts for God's sake. However, this is one of those great but flawed games. The graphics, level design, and soundtrack are all top notch, but the gameplay is incredibly rigid and the infamous Super Nintendo slowdown is here in spades. But I would not call this game broken like some people would, it's just a case where you have to learn to play the game by its own unbending rules, because if you don't, well, you won't last long. But if you do get the hang of it and learn all the patterns, this is one of the most rewarding playthroughs in the entire Super Nintendo library. It sucks that you essentially have to beat the game twice, but hey, if I can beat this game, Game, then you can too. Four. Demon's Crest. I've been a little hard on this one in past videos, I've been a little stupid and ignorant about it too, but in my defense, I've never been crazy about the fact that you can just harmlessly fly over obstacles, rendering some of the level design pointless, but still, if you want a game that fits this time of year, this is absolutely top notch. It stars that annoying red demon from the aforementioned Ghosts and Goblins series, but making him a playable character was a great idea because he is a badass and the art direction, boss design, sprite work, and music all build to a singular theme that will stick with you well after playing through it. Demon's Crest is one of those must-plays this time of year. Three. Super Castlevania 4. Now we're getting into the territory where it is mandatory to pull the shades and turn the lights off while playing. And with this one in particular, it's also mandatory to let the intro play all the way through. This is easily one of the best soundtracks for any 16-bit game ever. Every single track is spot-on perfect for each setting, building an atmosphere that's not only unlike any other Castlevania game, but unlike any other game, period. The mood and atmosphere is so well constructed here that Super Castlevania 4 is a top 10 Super Nintendo game any time of year, any way you slice it. Two. Clock Tower, going a tad bit off the radar here with a game only released in Japan, but there is an English patch available. This is an odd one that I admit may not be for everyone, but the horror elements are structured here in a way that's uncommon for a game of its time. Clock Tower is a point and click survival adventure title, and yeah, this game is slowly paced, but in this case, the visuals and sound design help add to the tension as you pace around this mansion looking for your missing companions as a crazed killer is on the loose, and you've got no weapons and nothing to defend defend yourself with. This is another must play for this time of year, it may be limited, but the strengths this game present outweigh its limitations. There's not another game on the system like Clock Tower. One. Super Metroid. Okay, this isn't a horror game by the letter of the law, but I'll be damned if this game isn't creepy as hell all the way through. Just those tense moments when your ship first lands on Zebus, with the rain pouring down and silence as you helplessly scan the map only to find ominous signs like wrecked ship. I know this game is now famous for speedruns, but I would recommend against that approach if you want to play this one on Halloween because this is one of those rarities where every aspect of the game fits together and complements each other perfectly. There are many reasons why this is considered to be one of, if not the best Super Nintendo game ever, with one major one being how creepy, unsettling, and unnerving it is. That makes it another must play for Halloween. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your Halloween.